What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the RDA. I hope you are doing well. This is your preview for Manchester United versus Liverpool on Sunday evening. It is going down, man. It is going down properly. Manchester United with a chance a genuine chance to begin to build a gap at the top of the table. And for the first time since the departure of Sir Alex, we have an opportunity to make a genuine title charge. But it's all about that game on the 17th. And I tell you what, the stakes are high. It's serious. So I'm going to be giving my predicted SI, my score prediction, as well as my just my general thoughts and my feelings surrounding this game. So let's get straight into the predicted SI. I'm not going to make this video too long. It um, In goal, it's got to be David De Gea, obviously. It, the centre-back partnership has to be Eric Bailey and Harry Maguire. Now, just very quickly on Eric Bailey, reports coming out from Manchester United that we are not, we are no longer in for a centre-back this January window. And there's conflicting reports about whether it's because Eric Bailey is playing well or whether it's because Manchester United are just incompetent and don't want to solve this issue right now and would rather wait till the summer because we all know how it goes down at Manchester United and doing deals in January. We seem to have a clear lack of preparation because usually when teams get, get deals done in January, it's not that they started working up on the deal in January. It's not that you pick up the phone to the director of Liverpool and you're like, hey, um, I'd like one of your players in this window today. No, you phone my months in advance and you get the deal structured and basically agreed behind the scenes months in advance or weeks in advance and then when the January transfer window comes you finalize the deal you know that's usually how it works at a well-run club or well-run uh, football brand because Manchester United is not a it's not a club anymore it's a brand it's a global brand but um, yeah for me I, the, I've got no time for the story for me it's about this game on Sunday and we'll, we'll cross that bridge of a centre-back when we get there when Mr. Glass Hamstrings uh, breaks his uh, breaks his freaking thighs, fam. You know, don't wait there. So Eric Bailey, Maguire, centre back partnership. On the right hand side, you've got to have Aaron Wambasaka. On the left hand side, pretty interesting. I think Alex Tellez missing out on the team has been a bit of it's been a bit unfortunate. You know, he's that new shiny toy who hasn't really got the attention that he deserves. He's that new signing that has really, really been a revelation for Manchester United because I think he's made Luke Shaw a better player. I really, really do. I think going forward, Luke Shaw will learn a lot from Alex Tellez. And defensively, Luke Shaw has always been solid. So I don't really mind whoever starts between them two, to be completely honest. And actually, I'd prefer Luke Shaw against Mo Salah than I would Telus against Mo Salah. And I'd prefer Aaron Wambisaka against um, against Mane than I would any other right back we have at our disposal. Because Axel can play there sometimes, but he's not he's not a right back. So that's that for me, innit? Uh, in the midfield, you've got to go with McFred. For me, I think he's going to go with McFred. I've talked about win percentages since the arrival of Bruno Fernandes. And there's a lot of stats that get thrown. And I got attacked on, well, not attacked, but I, I got into an argument with someone on Twitter the other day talking about win percentages. And yes, it is true that Matic has a better win percentage overall since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has arrived. Any midfield with Matic has a better win percentage than McFred overall. But when I say McFred, uh, in, in other words, McTominay, Fred and Bruno have a higher win percentage than Matic, Pogba and Bruno. I'm talking specifically about the since the arrival of Bruno Fernandes. The key word is Bruno. That triangle between Bruno, McFred is what I'm talking about. Ever since Bruno arrived, McTominay and Fred have had a higher win percentage than any other midfield doer. And whilst it is particularly marginal, it's still a higher win percentage nevertheless. We're not going to get into the semantics or the pedantics. So for me, the disrespect on McFred is unnecessary, fam. I think you play McFred, you don't concede. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. On the other hand, a lot of people might say you play Matic and you don't concede because we have a high clean sheet percentage with him. So really comes down to, to opinion at the end of the day. I think because um, Pogba and, and Matic played McWeek, he's obviously going to go with McFred. I, I personally think that you've obviously got Bruno in the 10. He can't be dropped. Would, ni would be nice to see Van der Beek get some time in this team, but it is what it is with Van der Beek. Now, the front three is very interesting because I've heard a lot of people talk about McFred Bruno at the 10, and then potentially Paul Pogba on the left, Rashford on the right, and Cavani in the middle. Very, very interesting. And whilst I do agree that Paul Pogba has to feature in this game because of the red-hot form he is in at the moment, and the fact that you just cannot leave Paul Pogba out after the pivotal performances he's put in, particularly against Burnley. If it wasn't for him, we don't get the three points and we don't sit top of the league. 
Um, for me, it's as simple as this. I think you've got to look at it and say that, yeah, Paul Pogba has played exceptionally well. Paul Pogba might have a good game against Liverpool. All the evidence points towards that. But Paul Pogba on the left versus Paul Pogba in the middle, which is better? For me, Paul Pogba in the middle every single day of the week. My worry with Paul Pogba playing out on the left is, is, is Oli's game management going to be good enough? If Oli, if Pogba starts to have a bad game at Anfield, will Oli make the necessary changes to fit him into a system and get the best out of him? Or will he just leave him like he usually does and hang him out to dry and take him off in the 75th minute when we're one nil down at Anfield and and take and take the absolute piss and bring Van der Beek on in the last five minutes I don't know that's my worry with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer I think if Pogba is going to play on the left there has to be a proper proper plan there has to be a proper plan of how to get the ball up the field and for me the only way you play Pogba Bruno and two other defensive midfielders in the same system is in a diamond that's for me. It's in a diamond. If you're going to play a 4-2-3-1 and you're going to play Pogba out on that left-hand side, then you have to have someone who's overlapping. You have to have Luke Shaw or Alex Telles overlapping and giving Pogba an outlet on that left-hand side. So he's not just playing the predictable long balls across the field to Rashford all the time. I don't want to see this long ball crap where we're playing the ball to Marcus Rashford and hoping his pace will bail us out. I also don't want to see five at the back crap with Dan James playing in a two with Rashford up front. I don't want to see that nonsense. I want to see Manchester United play the way they've been playing in the last five to ten games. Yes, I've moaned about it being fine margins. Yes, I've said that we haven't performed particularly well. But I've also said a win is a win. And when you win, when you're not playing well, it is a sign of a team that has the potential to be a championship caliber side because winning games is all that matters. It's not necessarily your performance. So for me, it's not a terrible thing. I just thought people were getting too gassed, um, you know, because some people think we're genuinely going to win the league. And, you know, I respect the confidence. I respect the positivity. But you can't go from we're not going to make top four to we're winning the league in less than six months, you know. But, you know, we are where we are. So, I, like I said, I respect the confidence. So, but anyways, I'm going off topic here. I'm going off track. Stay on track, Triple M. The point that I'm trying to make is if Paul Pogba plays out on the left, there has to be a clear plan and a clear outlet out on that left-hand side. And he has to stick to that side for me because I feel like he roams around too much. And um, when he does play long balls, it's always to Marcus Rashford and it's way too predictable. Um, who plays down the middle? For me personally, fam, you got to play Cavani because Martial is out of form. You cannot start Anthony Martial unless you start him on the left-hand side because at least he can drift in and get a shot off or play the pass. Um, and he has the ability to get past the man. But you cannot play Anthony Martial in the nine. For me, you cannot do that. You have to bring him off the bench if you're going to play him in the nine. Or you have to play him out on the wing. Because if we're going to play Anthony Martial in the nine and he misses a sitter in the first half against Liverpool, I am going to pull my hair out, fam. You know, I'm going to pull my hair out and I'm going to scream at the top of my lungs because he is off form at the moment. And I trust Cavani way more than I trust him at this point in time. Plus, I think Cavani is going to be mad, fam. He got that unfair ban. He's had time to think, of, to think about it. He's going to channel that negative energy and have the game of his life because that is the kind of player Cavani is. And I believe in him. So... I want to see Cavani at the front. I want to see Rashford on the right. I want to see Paul Pogba on the left with a proper system and not just this long ball crap. I want to see Bruno at the at the 10, obviously. I want to see McFred duo behind Bruno. I want to see Bailey and Maguire next to each other. I want to see Luke Shaw, but I want to see Luke Shaw instructed to get forward and not just stay back and guard Mo Salah the whole game. I want to see Aaron Wambisaka get forward as well. I want to see the link play between, the interplay between him and Marcus Rashford. And I want to see De Gea in goal because because my boy has been locking down that keeper position, fam. And uh, all those people who said he was done, like, the Haya ain't done, fam. Keepers don't, don't get done just because of age. Keepers tend to play a lot longer. Their prime tends to last a lot longer than most outfield players. So that's it for me. In terms of score predictions, honestly, honestly, it's hard to give a score prediction for a game of this magnitude without seeing the team sheet. Just being genuinely honest. But because I don't want to be that guy... I am going to go for a one-all draw. I think this has got a draw written all over it. I hope United win, obviously. And if we win, I'll be absolutely over the moon. But um, yeah, for me, there's nothing else to say. This game is the game that will show whether Manchester United are in a title race or not. We can get embarrassed. We can stink out the play and get a draw. Uh, or we can win and absolutely destroy Liverpool and play them off the park. Or we can nick it with the, 90, with the penalty in the 95th minute. Anything can happen in this type of game because I feel like Liverpool's defence is not as good as it used to be and they're not the same team they were a few years ago. So, interesting game. Anyways, it's been your boy Triple M. Not going to keep you here for longer. Peace!